वेलकम सब्जेक्ट कोड एम ए वन फाइव वन सब्जेक्ट मैथमेटिक्स फर्स्ट द टॉपिक नेम इज एज एम डॉट प्रीवियसली वी हैव स्टडी टू एप्लीकेशन ऑफ डिफ्रेंशिएशन वन इज टेलर एंड मेट्रोन सीरीज एक्सप्रेशन द सेकेंड पार्ट द कंकेविटी एंड कन्वेक्सिटी ऑफ गिवन कर्व next we will study one more application of differentiation known as asymptotes to understand asymptotes i give a classification of curves so we can classify curves in this way that there are some curves which are limited in extent so these curves extend In finite region, so they occupy finite region. These are finite curves, and we have some curves which extends up to infinity. For example, sine curve, and there are other curves also. Now, if in these types of curves, where these curves occupy finite area, if I consider A tangent at any point. So this is the point of contact, and it is the tangent. Now, if I move the point of contact along the curve, if I move the point of contact along the curve, nothing significant will be obtained for the curves which lie in finite region. Now we go to these types of curves which extends up to infinity. so i will write three types of curves three examples of curves which extends up to infinity one i have already mentioned this curve is sine curve and this curve is known as spiral it has a polar equation r equal to a e to the power alpha theta and we have one more well known curve which extends up to infinity so this this is does not represent the curve the curve is this and you must have seen this curve in 12th class this curve is known as hyperbola Having equation x square upon a square minus y square upon b square equal to one. Now, if we consider tangent at any point of this curve, and after this, if I move the point of contact along the curve towards infinity. then what will happen the tangent will tends towards infinity as the point of contact will tends towards infinity so in this case suppose if our origin is here then as the point of contact will move along the curve towards infinity the tangent will also tends towards infinity and will go at an infinite distance from the origin so the distance between the tangent and the origin will keep increasing continuously and will tend tends towards infinity now in sine curve if i consider a tangent at any point and if i move this tangent along the curve towards infinity then we will observe that the distance of tangent from the origin distance of tangent from the origin keeps oscillating keeps changing so when on your tangent will come here the distance will be 1 and when tangent will come here at this point here we will have vertical tangent so the tangent 
the distance of the tangent from the origin will keep changing as the point of contact move towards infinity along the curve in this case next so we do not obtain anything significant in these two cases but in the third case if we take a point of contact and if we draw a tangent at any point then it can be observed that if we move point of contact towards infinity along the curve then these tangents tends towards this dashed line tends towards this dashed line which are in this case passing through the origin so the distance of the tangent as the point of contact tends towards infinity tends to a finite quantity in this case in first and second case both the cases the distance of the tangent from the origin as the point of contact tends towards infinity in first case keeps increasing in second case keeps oscillating whereas in third case the distance of tangent from the origin from the origin as the point of contact tends towards infinity along the curve remain fixed so we can say that as the point of contact tends towards infinity along the curve the tangent tends towards a fixed straight line so this fixed straight line towards which the tangent of a curve tends as the point of contact tends towards infinity that fixed straight line is known as asymptote so asymptote means something which touches infinity so this was the example so we may have asymptotes we may not have asymptotes for some curve so now we are in a position to write the definition of asymptote so we can note down the asymptote definition of asymptote asymptote is a fixed straight line is a fixed straight line is a fixed straight line at a finite distance from the origin at a finite distance from the origin from the origin towards which towards which a tangent to a curve tends as the point of contact as the point of contact tends toward infinity along the curve so in this way we have understood the meaning of asymptote so asymptote is a fixed straight line towards which the tangent of a curve tends as the point of contact tends towards infinity along the curve now after the definition i will explain the method and algorithm to find asymptotes of algebraic curves so let us go towards that method how to find asymptote of an algebraic curve so for that mathematicians have developed a method by the application of differentiation and we will study those rules that algorithm to find asymptotes of algebraic curves so by algebraic curve i mean any curve having any curve having powers of x and y for example x to the power n plus a not x to the power n minus 1 y plus 
x to the power n minus 2 y square plus and so on plus x to the power n minus 1 b1 x to the power n minus 1 plus b2 x to the power n minus 2 y square plus and so on so algebraic curve may have any power of x and y any integer powers of x and y so we will consider these types of algebraic curve in which the x and y will have integer powers and for these types of curves we will study the rule to find Hessian curves so if we have a curve having any combination of powers of x and y then how to find Hessian curves So for that, first I will explain the rule to find asymptotes parallel to x-axis, parallel to y-axis and then we will study how to find oblique asymptotes. So by asymptotes parallel to x-axis and y-axis I mean, because we have understood that asymptote is a straight line and in reference frame you know this is x-axis and it is y axis. Now, as a not parallel to x axis means the straight line parallel to x axis. So, in this case, the equation of the as a dot will be of this form y equal to some constant. And as a dot or the straight line parallel to y axis means this type of straight line. And these types of as a dots will have equations x equal to some other constant. C. And we will also study how to find oblique asymptotes. So, oblique asymptote means these types of straight lines which are not parallel to the axis, x axis or y axis. So, oblique asymptotes are represented by y equal to mx plus c. y equal to mx plus c represent a straight line where m represents the slope of the straight line and c is the intercept of the straight line with the y axis. So, in this way we will study the calculation of asymptotes parallel to axis and oblique asymptotes. So, first I try to explain the rule, rules to find asymptotes parallel to parallel to x axis so to find as a cross parallel to x axis what should we do for example I take example of a curve and we try to calculate as a cross for that curve So as an example, I take this curve x square y square equal to a square bracket x square plus y square. Suppose this is the curve and we want to calculate as a dot parallel to x axis for this curve. So what is the rule? The rule says that find the coefficient of highest power of x. So, first we will try to calculate the coefficient of highest power of x and equate it to 0 and then factorize the left hand side in real factor. So the real factors will give us the asymptotes parallel to the x-axis. So we try to apply this rule here. So we have to calculate the coefficient of highest power of x. Now in we simplify this. So we have x square y square 
माइनस ए स्क्वायर एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस ए स्क्वायर वाई स्क्वायर इक्वल टू जीरो एंड नाउ वी ट्राइ टू कैलकुलेट दी हाईएस्ट पावर वी ट्राइ टू लोकेट दी हाईएस्ट पावर ऑफ एक्स सो द हाईएस्ट पावर ऑफ एक्स इज एक्स स्क्वायर इन दिस इक्वेशन एंड दी कोफिशिएंट ऑफ हाईएस्ट पावर ऑफ एक्स दैट इज एक्स स्क्वायर इन दिस केस इज कोफिशिएंट ऑफ एक्स स्क्वायर इज वाई स्क्वायर माइनस ए स्क्वायर सो अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट रूल वी इक्वेट इट टू जीरो and we calculate the linear factor real linear factor of left hand side so we get y minus a y plus a equal to 0 so we get two equations y equal to plus a and y equal to minus a so these are the two asymptotes parallel to x axis next we look at the rule to find asymptotes parallel to y axis so to find asymptotes parallel to y axis what shall we do we shall calculate the coefficient of highest power coefficient of highest power of y and we will equate that to g and then we will calculate the real linear factors the real factors of the left hand side in this relation and that those factors will give us the asymptotes parallel to y axis for example if we go through this curve the highest power of y the highest power of y in this curve is y square so in order to find asymptotes parallel to y axis we calculate the coefficient of highest power of y means we calculate the coefficient of y square now we observe that the coefficient of y square is x square minus a square and we equate it to 0 so this gives us two asymptotes two asymptotes parallel to y axis so in this way we have we can calculate asymptotes parallel to x axis and asymptotes parallel to y axis next i may add one more rule that will help us in solving problems on asymptotes that is a theorem which says that the number of asymptotes the number of asymptotes of a curve of degree n a curve of degree n cannot exceed cannot exceed n so we can apply this idea this theorem here degree of a curve means the degree of the highest order degree term so for example you see here in this curve we have three terms one term is x square y square second term is a square x square third term is a square y square now in these terms the sum of the powers of x and y the sum of the powers of x and y is 4 in the first term and the sum of the powers of x and y in the second term is 2 the sum of the powers of x and y in the third term is 2 so this term is of degree 4 This term is of degree two, and this term is of degree two. Now the highest degree term is this. So the highest degree is four in this curve. So we have a term of highest degree equal to four in this curve. That is why the degree of this curve will be four. 
so according to that theorem this curve will have not more than four asymptotes it may have less than four asymptotes but it will not have more than four asymptotes and when we try to calculate asymptotes parallel to x axis and y axis we find that we have obtained four asymptotes for this curve so that means this curve will have only these four asymptotes and there will not be any other additional asymptote for this curve according to that theorem because the degree of this curve is 4 so this curve can have at most four asymptotes and when we try to calculate asymptotes parallel to x axis and y axis we form that we have four asymptotes parallel to x axis so these are the total number of asymptotes of the given curve so in this way we have calculated all the asymptotes of the given curve we take some more examples on finding asymptotes parallel to axis for example i consider this question in which the equation of the curve is a square upon x square plus b square upon y square equal to 1 a square upon x square plus b square upon y square equal to 1 and we try to calculate asymptotes of this term so we simplify this term then we obtain a square y square plus b square x square minus x square y square equal to 1 uh, 0 so we can simplify this curve by multiplying this equation with x square y square and we can have this form of the equation now to calculate asymptotes parallel to x axis we will observe the highest power of x so the highest power of x is 2 and the coefficient of x square the highest power of x is equal to b square minus y square equal to g which when factorized gives us two asymptotes y equal to plus minus b similarly we calculate the coefficient of highest power of y to find asymptotes parallel to y axis we calculate the coefficient of highest power of y and the highest power of y in this curve is 2 so we calculate the coefficient of y square Now the coefficient of y square is equal to a square minus x square, which is equal to zero, which give us two asymptotes parallel to y-axis. So x equal to plus minus a. So in this example also we have obtained four asymptotes by calculating asymptotes parallel to x-axis and y-axis, and the degree of the curve is four because we have highest degree term. Equal to having degree four. So the given curve is of degree four. That is why this curve will have no more than four asymptotes. So this curve can have at most four asymptotes. So in this way we have calculated all the asymptotes of this curve by calculating the asymptotes parallel to x. But this may not be true always because there may exist oblique asymptotes. So in that case. we will we may not have asymptotes parallel to axis so in that case we will uh, study how to find oblique asymptotes next i add one more example to find asymptotes parallel to axis this time i consider this example a square upon x square minus b square upon y square equal to 1 so this curve when simplified gives us a square y square minus b square x square minus x square y square equal to 
and when we try to calculate azathoth's parallel x axis we find that the highest power of x is 2 so we calculate the coefficient of x square and the coefficient of x square in this case is minus b square minus y square equal to minus b square minus y square and we equate it to 0 to find as a not parallel to x axis now we observe that we actually get y square plus b square equal to 0 and we observe that we cannot find real linear factor of this part or if we try to solve so we will get y equal to plus minus iota b which does not represent any real straight line because the slope is imaginary because we have imaginary quantity in the equation of the curve so the intercept with y axis is imaginary so it will not represent any real straight line so we uh, reject these two equations for azathoth next so there is no azathoth parallel to x axis next we try to find azathoths parallel to y axis and for that we find the coefficient of the highest power of y the highest power of y is 2 in this example also so we calculate the coefficient of y square and we observe that the coefficient of y square is a square minus x square and when we equate that to zero we get two azathoths x equal to plus minus a parallel to y axis so in this way we can calculate azathoths parallel to x axis and y axis next i want to move towards the method of finding oblique azathoths so next look at the rules to find oblique azathoths so next we will study rules to find oblique azathoths oblique azathoths of an algebraic curve the curve having integer powers of x and y for that i consider one example simultaneously and i will try to explain the algorithm the method to find oblique azathoths so for that i consider an algebraic curve having equation of this form y cube minus 6x y square plus 11 x square y minus 6x cube then minus 4y square then plus 15xy then minus 19x square plus y minus 11x plus 6 equal to 0 so we are considering equation in which we have to calculate azathoths of this algebraic curve so the mission is to find all the azathoths of this curve to find all the azathoths of this curve now if we try to find azathoths parallel to x axis and y axis in that case we will observe that the highest power of y is 3 and the coefficient of y cube is constant so we will not get any azathoth parallel to y axis similarly the highest power of x is x cube and the coefficient of x cube is also constant so we will not get any azathoth parallel to x axis so in this case no azathoth no azathoth is parallel to x axis and y axis
So for this mission we cannot find any azimuth dot which is parallel to either x axis or y axis. So we try to calculate oblique azimuth dot. Now how to find oblique azimuth dot? To find oblique azimuth dots of a of a given algebraic curve, first we need to observe the degrees of the terms. So as I have informed you that degree of any term means the sum of the powers of x and y in that term. So this term y q is of degree 3. This term is of degree 3 because the sum of the powers of x and y is 3. This term is of degree 3. This term is of degree 3. So I note and club these terms of degree 3. Next we have terms of degree 2. We have 3 terms of degree 2 and we have 2 terms of degree 1 and the constant term will be a term of degree 0. Now this uh, uh, method to find oblique is not safe that first you observe the degree of the curve. Suppose the degree of the curve is n. Now in this case all the curve is of degree 3 because the highest degree term is of degree 3 in the given curve. So for this example or n is equal to 3. So we know it. Now if the given curve is of degree n then we can calculate phi n x y. Phi n x y means all the terms of degree n. So in this question for n is equal to 3 so this, these four terms represents phi n x y. We know that n is equal to 3, so we can write phi 3 x1. But to understand the algorithm, we keep n as such and we know that the value of n is equal to 3 in this particular problem. So this is our phi n x1. Similarly, this will be of degree 1 less than the n. So these terms will be of degree n minus 1 and these terms are of degree n minus 2 and this is phi n minus 3. So if you will need we will uh, use remaining terms also. So in this way we have observed that to find oblique of terms first we need to identify the degree of the curve. And to understand the algorithm, we denote the degree by n. But in the particular question, we will know the value of the n. So in this case, the degree n is equal to 3. So after this, after finding phi n x y, so we have observed that phi n x y is equal to these four terms. So after having obtained phi n x y where n is the degree of the given curve what we do we put to find as a torx we put x equal to 1 and y equal to m. So we will obtain oblique as a torx of this form y equal to x plus c. m represent the slope of that straight line c C represent the intercept of that straight line. So this M represent the slope of the algebra. So if you put x equal to 1 and y equal to m, then we obtain phi n. So because we will put x equal to 1 and y equal to m, so we will have a uh, expression in terms of m only of degree n. So in this way we calculate phi n m and after that after calculating phi n m we make an equation phi n m equal to 0 and we try to solve this equation 
because this equation will be an equation having some powers of n so we will solve it to find values of m to find values of m so suppose if after solving we get values of m equal to m1 m2 m3 and so on then these values of m will represent the slopes of the asymptote so we will have as a oblique asymptote with this slope we will have oblique asymptote with m2 slope we will have oblique asymptote with m3 slope if we obtain m1 m2 m3 after solving this equation in m which we have obtained by calculating phi m from phi x y where phi x y represent the terms of the highest degree in the given curve so particularly for this question we can observe that our phi m will be equal to m cube minus 6 m square plus 11 m minus 6 so what i have done for calculating phi m because i know phi m x y is equal to these four terms so i have substituted x equal to 1 and y equal to n to obtain phi m now after obtaining phi m what i do i solve this equation m cube minus 6 m square plus 11 m minus 6 equal to 0 so i will try to solve this equation and i will try to calculate the values of m so because it is a cubic equation in n so to solve it we apply some particular values of m which satisfies this equation so we try to find some particular values of m which satisfy this equation so for that we can put n equal to 0 n equal to plus 1 minus 1 n equal to plus 2 and then n equal to minus 2 like that so when we put n equal to 1 in this equation we observe that the equation gets satisfied so n equal to 1 is a solution of this equation so m minus 1 is a factor of the left hand side cubic expression now if n equal to 1 is the root then we apply synthetic division to apply synthetic division we write the coefficients of the m in descending powers so the first coefficient is 1 second is minus 6 third is 11 and the fourth is minus 6 and to apply synthetic division by default we set 0 here and then we multiply this 1 with 1 and we multiply this 1 with 0 and add both the values so 1 into 1 plus 1 into 0 gives us 1 next we calculate 1 into minus 6 plus 1 into 1 so that gives us minus 5 next we calculate 1 into 11 plus 1 into minus 5 that gives us plus 6 next we add all these pairs so we get 1 minus 5 6 and 0 now these first three numbers represents the coefficient represents the coefficients of the quadratic expression which will be obtained after dividing the left hand side cubic expression by the m minus 1 factor so this synthetic division gives us the factorization of the left hand side so one factor will be m minus 1 which we observe by inspection and after that if we will divide this given expression by m minus 1 we will get m square minus 5m plus 6 so using synthetic division i have factorized the left hand side so and i'm writing coefficients of this quadratic expression from the synthetic division result 
So here I have one, here minus five, and here six because of these three numbers which I have obtained through the synthetic division. So in this way we factorize the cubic expression, and then we observe that the quadratic factor can be factorized very easily, and we will have m minus two and m minus three as factor. So we observe that we are obtaining three values: one, two, and three. So we will have three isotopes of one of slope one, second of slope two, third of slope three. Now, after the calculation of the slopes, the value of m of the tangent, we need to find the value of intersects, the value of c. So this method gives us the values of m. Now, if the values of m, you can observe here, if the values of m are all distinct or different, then to find c, we have a fixed formula. So to find c, we will apply that formula. So, if the values of m, if these values of m are distinct or different, then to find c, we will apply this rule: c equal to minus y n minus one m upon y n dash. So we will apply this formula to find cubic asymptotes if the obtained slopes are all different. So we will not apply this formula for repeating values of n. For example, if uh, suppose if we obtain one 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 three, then to find the slope corresponding to one one, we cannot apply this formula. However, to find the slope corresponding to three, we can apply this formula because three is not repeating. So this formula will not be applicable for the repeated values of m. We will see these types of example later. Next, our work will be to calculate the value of c corresponding to all the values of m. So for that, I. Do my calculation here. So I try to calculate C. Now C will be equal to minus phi n minus one n. So we will need phi n minus one n. So we we observe initially phi n minus one n will be obtained by substituting. x equal to one and y equal to m in phi n minus one x. So phi n minus one m will be equal to minus four m square plus fifteen m minus nineteen. So this is the value of phi n minus one m. And further for that formula we will need phi n dash m. So phi n dash m can be obtained by differentiating the phi n m. With respect to m, so we get 3m square minus 12m plus 11. When we differentiate phi n with respect to m, so we can check the values of phi n minus 1m. Phi n minus 1m is minus 4m square plus 15m minus 19, and phi n dash m. Has been obtained by differentiating phi n. So it is 3m square minus 12m plus 11. So we put the values of phi n minus 1m and phi n dash and calculated there in this formula. Then we obtain minus 4m square plus 15m minus 19 upon 3m square minus 12m. Plus 
so if we will try to now to find values of c corresponding to the values of m we put m equal to 1 in the above relation and then we will get the corresponding values of c so when we put m equal to 1 we obtain c equal to minus 4 plus 15 minus 19 upon 3 minus 12 plus 11 so minus 19 and minus 4 minus 23 and plus 15 so minus 8 and here we have minus sign so we will have 8 upon we will have minus 12 plus 1 equal to minus 1 so we will have 2 in the denominator so the value of c is equal to 4 so when the value of m is 1 the value of c is equal to 4 so the corresponding other terms will be y equal to mx plus c the value of m is 1 so y equal to x and the value of c is 4 so y equal to x plus 4 is the other term corresponding to m equal to 1 and c equal to 4 so in this way we have found one oblique asymptotes to find the remaining two asymptotes we will calculate the value of c for m equal to 2 also and m equal to 3 also in a similar way so when you will put m equal to 2 you will obtain 4 into 4 minus 16 when you will put m equal to 2 you will obtain 30 minus 90 and in the denominator when you will put m equal to 2 you will obtain 4 into 3 12 when you will put m equal to 2 here you will obtain minus 24 plus 11 so in the numerator we will have minus 19 plus 16 equal to minus 35 plus 30 will give us minus 5 so we will have plus 5 because of this minus sign and in the denominator 12 plus 11 will be equal to 23 minus 24 will be minus 1 so the value of c will be minus 5 for n equal to 2 so the other not corresponding to n equal to 2 will be y equal to 2x minus 5 so to obtain the second other not what we have done we have substituted the value of m which is 2 and corresponding value of, value of c which is minus 5 in this form so we have obtained the second asymptotes similarly you can obtain the third asymptotes and in that case you will obtain the value of c equal to plus 5 so your asymptotes will be y equal to 3x plus 5 in the third case so in this way we have calculated three oblique asymptotes for the given term. So this is the method by which we can calculate oblique asymptotes of a given curve when the values of m are different or distinct. So you can observe the curve is of degree 3. So the curve will have at most three asymptotes and these are the three asymptotes of the curve. Next, I will give you the rule to find C when we get limited values of M. So, you can note down that rule. Rule to find Rule to find values of C when values of M are repeating so according to this rule if the values of M are repeating twice then the formula to find C will be different and if the values of M will repeat thrice, three times then the formula to find 
the values of c will be separate will be different so first if two values of m are equal or repeating then the corresponding two values of c will be obtained by this formula c square by factorial to phi n double dash m so you can understand the notation phi n double dash m so for this you will observe the highest degree term of the given curve phi n m and you will put x to the power n by to the m then you will obtain phi n m and you will differentiate twice phi n m to have phi n double dash m the next term will be c upon factorial 1 Y n minus one m dash, and the third term will be y n minus two m equal to g. So using this formula, we can find the value of c. We can find the two values of c corresponding to the two repeating values corresponding to the two repeating values of m. Similarly. If three values of m are repeating, if three values of m are repeating, then c can be calculated by writing a similar formula. C cube upon factorial three y n triple dash m plus c square upon factorial two y n minus one m double dash. Then c upon factorial one y n minus two m dash and then y n minus three m equal to g. So in this way, from this formula, we will obtain the three values of c corresponding to the three repeating values of m in case of obligation terms, which are parallel. Uh, to each other. So, similarly, we can extend this idea, and you can observe the symmetry in these formulas. So, to find as a thoughts, to find the values of c corresponding to three repeating values of m, you will start your formula with c cube upon factorial three pi n triple s m, and then you will successively decrease the power of c, the factorial. The subscript of phi and the derivative, successively up to zero differentiation term. So in this way, you can easily memorize these two formula to find the jump dots to find the values of c corresponding to repeating values of m. So next, I consider one example having repeated values of m, and I will explain the calculation of. C for the repeating value of m. So this time we have a curve 4x cube minus 3x y square minus y cube plus 2x square minus x y. Minus y square minus one equal to zero. So the given curve is 4x cube minus 3x y square minus y cube plus 2x square minus x y minus y square minus one equal to zero. And we have to find all the adjacent dots of this curve. Now first we will try to calculate adjacent dots parallel to axes. So if we try to calculate adjacent dots parallel to x-axis. Then the highest power of x is three, and the coefficient of x cube is constant, so no adjacent dot parallel to x axis. Similarly, the coefficient of highest power of y, which is y cube, is constant, so there is no adjacent dot parallel to y axis. So we try to calculate oblique adjacent dots. To calculate oblique adjacent dots, we observe the degree of the term. So we observe that the highest degree term is of degree three, and we have. Three 
such terms of degree 3 and next we have two degree terms so these three terms will denote y and xy and these terms will denote phi n minus 1 xy and we do not have any terms of degree 1 so you can say that phi n minus 2 xy is actually 0 for this term and next phi n minus 3 xy means phi 0 xy because our n is 3 so means 0 degree terms is equal to minus 1 so we have observed terms of all the degrees and we observed that the highest degree term is of degree 3 for the given curve so the curve is of degree 3 now to find asymptotes public asymptotes we calculate phi n so we observe that phi n will be obtained phi n will be equal to 4 minus 3 n square minus n cube so this is phi n now we solve this equation now we solve phi n equal to 0 equation and try to find the value of n so phi n equal to 0 equation will be equal to n cube plus 3 n square minus 4 equal to 0 so we need to solve this equation 4 n So we need to solve this equation n cube plus 3m square minus 4 equal to 0. Again, it is a cubic equation. So to solve it, we apply some particular values of n, n equal to 0, n equal to 1, n equal to 2, like that. So when we put n equal to 1, we observe that this equation is satisfied. So m minus 1 is a factor. Now we Apply synthetic division for that we have coefficients 1, 3, 0, minus 4. So you can observe that the coefficient of term with power m with power in which the power of m is 1 is not available in this curve. So the coefficient corresponding to m has been selected as 0. And m equal to 1 is a solution. So m minus 1 is a factor. To find the quadratic factor, which we will obtain after dividing this cubic expression by m minus 1, we apply synthetic division. So we have our trans solution as 1. And now we apply our synthetic division by selecting 0 here. And we obtain 1 here, then 1 into 3 plus 1 into 1, 4 and then 4 and we add these pairs so we get 1, 4, 4, 0 so these three numbers will give me the factorization of this cubic expression so one factor will be n minus 1 and the quadratic factor will be n square plus 4m plus 4 so equal to G. So I will have m minus 1 and this quadratic expression can be written as n plus 2 whole square. It can be written as n plus 2 whole square. So we obtain three values of m. First value is n equal to 1 and two repeating values. Now to find the value of c corresponding to these repeating value of m we need to use this formula so i will show you how to find the two values of c for n equal to minus 2 in this question however you can calculate the value of c corresponding to this one n equal to one you can calculate the value of c by that whole formula uh, minus phi n minus one n upon phi n dash n because this value of one is not repeating so 
here the old formula we have written. Now I will explain how to find the value of value of c for n equal to minus two. So to find the value of c for n equal to minus two, I will need these terms. So first is c square one factor into two factor two is equal to two. Now I am double s. So I need to differentiate by m twice. So the first differentiation will give me minus six m. Minus 3m square is the first differentiation. The second differentiation will give me minus 6 minus 6m. So you can verify it. It represents 5m double s m. So 5m double s m is equal to minus 6 minus 6m. So I write it here minus 6 minus 6m. So it is the value of point double s. Then I have c upon one is alright. So I will simply write c. Now I need point minus one dash n. So for that, first I need to calculate point n minus one n. So I calculate point n minus one n. Point n minus one n will be equal to two minus m. Minus m square, and I need first derivative, so I differentiate it once. Phi n minus one dash m will be equal to minus one minus two m. So here you will have minus one minus two m plus phi n minus two m. Phi n minus two m. Will be zero because y n minus two x y is zero. So when we will put x equal to one y equal to n, so we will obtain y n minus two n equal to zero. So we obtain this equation from which we can calculate the value of c. Now to find the value of c, we use that repeated value of m, which was minus two. So we put n equal to minus two in this, this equation. So we obtain when we put n equal to minus two, we obtain minus six plus twelve. So we obtain plus six upon two three. So we get three c square. When we put n equal to minus two here, we get plus four minus one three. So we get three c here equal to zero. Now this equation gives us c into c plus one equal to zero. So c equal to zero and c equal to one. So corresponding to n equal to minus two, we have obtained these two values of n, n equal to zero and n equal to minus one. So the two other terms will be y equal to minus two x plus zero and y equal to minus two x minus one. So these will be the two other terms. Corresponding to the repeated values of n. So in similar way, we can find the values of c corresponding to three repeating values of n. Thank you.